Hi, before we build our tables in Dataverse towards our facility maintainers or management application, let's quickly address the following topic. Number one, Microsoft 365 developer account. Before you can create this account, you need a personal Microsoft account to create it. Your personal Microsoft account could be Gmail, anything that ends with gmail.com or artwood.com or yahoo.com or live.com or anyone. But that account must have been used for Microsoft uh, product or event in the past. But if you have Outlook account or Live account, that is Microsoft original email service. So you don't need to bother if you've used it to register for Microsoft product in the past or not. But if what you have is Gmail because you have a PC and you've logged into Microsoft with Gmail on that PC, that literally is a Microsoft account and you can use it. So I think we've said this clear. You need a personal account before you can create a Microsoft 365 developer account. All right. And this is what Microsoft 365 Developer Account offers you, E5 license, license that give you access to all these applications and services online, Power Apps inclusive, Power Automate inclusive, even Power BI inclusive. And don't forget, in the course of this bootcamp, we are covering Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and we are also using Microsoft Database. So this is it. When you have the Microsoft 365 Developer Account, it gives you access to three different these three services that we've mentioned here, Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate. So how do we then get Dataverse, which is the database? It's part of Power Apps, but you need the license for it. But for you to get it for free, this is why you also need a Power Apps developer account. So you need two accounts. One will give you access to these three, but for you to have access to Dataverse, you need the Power Apps developer account. So looking down here, to create your Microsoft 365 developer account, just visit this URL that we have on the screen here. And once you are done creating your Microsoft 365 developer account, if you log in back in your office.com, you will see something like this. But most of the time, it is logged in to your personal account. So you will not see all the applications and services that we need. You will be troubling, oh, I can't find it there. I'm on office.com. The issue might be because you did not log in with your developer account. To know if you've logged in with your developer account or not, navigate to the top right, you know, and check your profile picture or the name there. You will see if it is if it ends with gmail.com or outlook.com or all those things, that is see your personal account. So you need to sign out and sign in with the Microsoft 365 developer account that you created. That email that ended with something uh, dot on microsoft.com. You know, that is exactly the developer email uh, um, account. And you know that when you have the developer account, it only gives you access to uh, those three applications we talked about. So you still need the Power Apps developer plan. But if you follow the video in the link that I've given to you, they will guide you through these two things. I just need to explain to you more about the Power Apps developer account, developer plan. So this Power Apps developer plan gives you access to, uh, you know, free development and testing environment for Power Apps, everything in Power Apps for free, full license, but you can use it for production only for learning and development purposes. So it's developer friendly and it has database. You know, that is why we need this plan to get free access to database. Don't forget, that is the only missing component in all that we have right here. All right. So database is the backend that is more or less the data service, database service, you know, in Microsoft Power Platform. And that's what we need to create a table that we'll be using for our run facility maintenance or management application. So having said this, for you to create your Power Apps, you know, developer plan, visit this URL, aka.ms slash plan. But if you follow the link to the video earlier shared, both are, you know, done in that video. So you'll be able to follow that guide and I highly, highly recommend it. Okay. So now that we sort this out, let's go ahead and create, you know, our columns. Because we are creating table in Dataverse, these are the columns we would like to address. The vendor name, the damage observed. You can even take a snapshot of this with your phone so that I can have all the names somewhere. Uh, but because right now, I'm just going to go ahead and start creating them. So I'll go to my browser and office.com. That is exactly where I am now, office.com. And in office.com, you rather see Power Apps here. If you can't find it, go to this waffle button at the top left. You will see Power Apps. If you can't find it there, Click on this all apps, you will see power apps. Definitely by scrolling through here, you will see power apps. So I'm going to click on power apps, which will open up a new window for me right now. And then we, I'm going to guide you through this. 
So this is Power Apps, and you can actually create your app by from blank database. Remember, that's what we need: SharePoint, Excel, SQL, Image, or even Figma. But what we're interested in right here is first we create a solution. What is the advantage of creating a solution? Once you build a, sol a app inside the solution, no, we call it that way. You know, we build an app inside the solution. You are able to export that thing as a managed component. So when you when I export it, every component of that solution, the application, the data, the flow, automated flow, the dashboard, everything I created with that app can be exported the same way it is and put on another environment, you know, which could be your customer or another organization, and they can use it easily there. So solution is the best way to package whatever you are creating and all its components. That is why I'm clicking on solution. Again, when you open Power Apps, make sure you also click on your this Microsoft environment, that's actually where I need to click on, not where I am now, because where you are might not have access to database. So you see, build apps with database. Because I already have Power Apps developer plan, that is why you can see my name and this environment under build apps with database. So it's good to always go back to it and make sure you are doing whatsoever, whatsoever you are doing is from that environment. As you can see right there, that is the environment where I am. Okay. So the next, under this solution, you have to create a new solution. I'll call it new solution and let's name it and I'm going to call it run um, app, run application. So run application, meaning every application, every time building, you know, is within this solution called run application. You need to select publisher. Just go ahead and select the CDS default publisher. There's not so much to explain here today. So I'll click on create. So it's going to create an environment which are maybe a package solution where you can do many things. This is a solution. It is called, we call it run application. These are everything inside the solution. You can create as many apps as possible. You can create chatbots. You can create cloud flows. You can even create table, which is for database. Now we are starting with table, which is database. I'm going to click on tables. And from here, you know, it's empty because no table within this environment. So I just have to click on new and say, what am I creating? Not app, not all this thing. It's actually new table. And I'm going to name it. I'm going to name it run, you know, facility, facility management app. So just name it that way and click enable attachment so that you know can process uh, files that are not always tables and structure files like attachment and audio files as well. So under advanced option, you don't need anything to touch here at the moment. You know, just leave it as it is, the standard table and click on save. So once you click on save, it's going to create a table. That's the table. You need to determine what columns do you want on this table because these are the columns where we'll be dropping records to once we build our application, all right? And the first of them is venue name. We're going to do venue name choice. So right there, this is it. It's empty, but it comes with some columns, you know, some predefined columns. As you can see here, name, run facility management app, created by, you know, created on these columns, additional column that comes with it. Uh, is for auditing and several other purposes, many, many, many columns. But the real columns we want to use in the app, you know, we need to create them. And you can create by just going to um, right here. You can click right here to this plus sign, which I've clicked. I need venue name. So venue, you know, it's better to write them together in the camera case. Venue name, which is what I have here. And data type. I want it to be choice, you know, the different structure that we have. Choice and it's choice. So, so that people can just select from that, you know, um, choice feed. Uh, is it required? Is it optional? You can determine that here. Simple behavior is simple. It's calculated. Yeah. So, do you want them? Do you want it searchable? Yes, want it searchable. And um, right there, you're going to create your new choice. So, and to create new choice, um, I'll start from here. The first is, let's say, Sapreto. Sapreto all. Yep. That is the facility that we're looking at. And um, of course, right here, the label is applied to all uh, display name. Could be uh, venue. Don't forget this venue. Venue name, rather. Venue name. And this number here, that is what is coded at the back end. So it's better to list them as one because that's number one. Uh, this second one here uh, could be EMLT. Of course, uh, we're going to put that here as well. Number two. It's good to do it that way 
and then you have to literally you can create as many other you know um uh, building as you want uh, let, let's put chapel let's put chapel university chapel uh, this is number three the third option as many options so one two three is easy rather than using those numbers that comes with it and this is fine in case you click on advanced option you don't want to do any other thing and nothing i'm going to click on save so we've created our first uh, venue which is the first column that we need right here now we've defined it and um, default choices is to say oh do you want to hold one value as default choice no no value we are not using any value as the first choice so um do you want it to be possible to select multiple at the same time uh no it's not um possible we don't need it synchronize choice with in case you have other options you just want to pick from uh we put venue name so if i come to v you see v is venue name that is the option we have created so i'm going to click it so that is the option we've created I'm going to click on save as a column venue name has been created let's move to the next which is damage observed just clicking here plus here we say damage observed or oh, and here you just have to be single line of text just type the damage observed there's nothing to change here click on save the reason why you are writing you are creating those columns without leaving name a uh, space is because variable name is better to keep them together uh when you leave space um technically there's something that's always between connecting them together and that might disrupt you when you are trying to customize your application so it's better to keep them bonded together in that way uh, we've created damage observed let's go to damage image we want you to be able to upload the image of the damage observed so i'm going to say damage image this particular one is not single line of text it's rather you know file and the file is image type so i'm going to click on save then who are we assigning this to? Because we want to be able to assign it to someone to either fix it or check it out once it's reported. And that leads us to assign to. So I'm going to say assigned to. This time around, it, the data type is going to be lookup because there's a table that stores people. Uh, it's a lookup feed and I'm connecting. So lookup and uh, to, to customer. Let me just want to show lookup. Yeah, it's optional. Uh, yes, it's optional at that moment in time. And I'm looking up the value of that person on another table. For everyone within the organization, their data are stored on that user's database. So the related table I'm looking up to, joining this table now that I'm creating, so another table is user. If I type user, you will see user. This is user. So I'm linking this to the user table because there's another table that exists. Everyone in the organization, all that details are there. I don't need to be collecting it again. Just, you know, look up to that table. That is what the lookup feed does. And at the back end, it will create a relationship between this primary table I'm creating and the lookup table, you know, which is the uh, user table. All right. Let's look at issue status. What are the status of these issues? And then, you know, you should be able to change the status. So say issue status. This has to be a choice, of course, uh, instead of this, it's going to be choice feed, choice, and um, of course, optional requirement, and I'm coming down here. Uh, what am I synchronizing with? I need to create new choice. So what is the new choice? I'm calling this uh, item status. And what are the status? New. When a new request is created, let's turn this one to one and not use those huge number. And the second after new, um, I say inspected because it needs to be inspected and let's say this is two and lastly say fixed so it's been fixed and this is three all right so i'm going to click on save so we've created the choice that can always go back there and update that choice item and what are we synchronizing with that's with the, that's the choice we've created so which is issue i think it's issue status if i search here okay we're going to find it here by just scrolling here item status actually item status so i'm going to click on save so you see we're creating a table we are synchronizing with this and the next is date fixed we want to know what date was it fixed we also want to collect time alongside um say date fixed we're interested in the date and i'm coming down here and say date and time is it just date only i'm fine with date only and going to click on save the next is fixed image when it is fixed we want to see an image to show oh, this thing has truly be fixed so I'm going to call this fixed 
image. Of course, you can guess what it will be this time around. It's file and it is image. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on save. Then cost fix. How much you know does it cost to fix it? So later we're able to use this to also decide on budgeting. How much are we spending? Cost fixed on fixing those facility. The data type is currency, and that is fine. It will handle that. Then after this is date inspected. We want to know which day was it was it inspected? Remember the status is new. You know inspected and fixed. You know and we also want to be sure that what date was it inspected. So date inspected. Uh, when I speak to date inspected, it's definitely going to be date. Date only, we're interested in date only this time around. And click save. Right, and we have inspection comment in case there was a particular comment when it was inspected. You know, we put it there inspection comment in case there was any comment at that point in time. Make it description, you know, multiple line of text so that it's something uh, coming to text. And you see the multiple line of text, which is the plain. We don't need to be rich. Plain text under multiple line of text is fine. So you can take multiple texts, you know, different lines of text to describe exactly what you see or any other thing you observe Why you know, inspecting that facility. And the last column we're going to create right here is fixed approval. Fixed approval. We want to know who approves it because the moment you change the status to fixed, we just don't want it to be, to be assumed that it is fixed. It is not finally fixed until it is approved and someone must surely do that approval of course we're going to do look up here again look up which table are we relating to the table that stores all record of users in the organization is actually users so that's the table we are relating to and i'm going to click on save that is awesome right now you see it doesn't take so much it's just few minutes and you're done we've been able to create all the columns we need for our application and you know it's on that table in case you want to see all of those columns just come here and click on columns you will see there are few columns we create and there are some columns that comes with it so you also um, be uh, take note of that you know there are some columns that we created there are some that comes with it so that for auditing and several other functions so right here we have all the columns on this table we created assign to a serve. You can easily tell, you know, if it is ours or not. You know, cost fixed. You no know, uh, created by it's not from loss. Uh, damage observed, damage image. You know, date inspected, date fixed. You know, fixed approval, fixed image. You know, issue status. You know, and on and on like that. So this is cool. Go through this. Uh, tomorrow we will be building an application on top of this table. Don't forget the way to see this thing is there is a back end where I store my application, my store my information, and there's a bulk front end that I use to input data. We're going to build the front end with Power Apps tomorrow, but today we've created the back end just the way we've done, you know, during the live session. Thank you and bye for now.